So according to news and rumors, Intel's upcoming Coffee Lake processors are giving us a little bit of the type of thing we've come to expect from Intel, and that would most notably be about a 10% bump in single-threaded performance. But what's really exciting about Coffee Lake is actually the bump in core counts and thread counts that we're gonna see across the mainstream platform, which we haven't seen in a long, long time from Intel, and yes, that looks like it's a direct result to uh, AMD's Ryzen. Most notably, at the top of the stack is gonna be the 8700K, which will feature six cores and 12 threads, which is a nice little bump from past generations which only featured four cores and eight threads on those processors. Now as long as that top end chip doesn't see a big price bump over the past generations uh, being like the 7700K and the 6700K, we should actually see some pretty good value from those uh, top end chips from Intel which again you could argue we haven't seen for quite a while. So as a content creator, I am constantly using Adobe's products, specifically Premiere Pro, but even the rest of their Creative Cloud suite. However, today I do wanna focus just on Premiere Pro and the Adobe Media Encoder that goes with it. So to give you some idea of the gains you may experience with Coffee Lake over uh, KB Lake or even some of the past generations of Intel's uh, architectures, I had to do a few things with the numbers that are gonna give us a rough estimate. However, again, this is just guesstimation and estimation, so it's definitely not gonna be perfect. was to use my Ryzen 1800X and uh, disable cores down to four cores and eight threads and get a baseline for a 1080p render, a 1440p render, and a 4K render. I then re-enabled two cores, getting it up to six cores and 12 threads, and redid those tests to get those numbers, and then compare what kind of percentage gains we see in Adobe Media Encoder for uh, four cores and eight threads versus six cores and 12 threads. And while I know it's not a great thing to be using the uh, Zen architecture and trying to extrapolate from that Intel gains uh, that you may see from four cores to six cores, uh, it's the best I can do and I'm working with what I have. So once I got the percentage gains from going from a four core to a six core processor, I then went to Linus Tech Tips 1800X review and pulled out the 7700K score for their media encoding task. And although we don't know exactly what resolution or settings that encoding was done on, the following charts should give you a little bit of an idea what to expect from the 8700K. So I guess on to those charts. So as I already mentioned, my first task was to figure out what type of gains we would normally see in Adobe Media Encoder by going from four cores and eight threads to six cores and 12 threads. And the raw data is on this chart here for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K renders. Now, obviously the big thing here is that depending on each individual settings and your use case, these numbers will fluctuate. So this is very subjective to whatever your actual media encoder settings are, but these are the raw numbers that I was working with. And what I found was a clear trend that the higher the resolution, the bigger the gain ended up being for adding cores and threads, at least going from four cores to six cores. We saw 17% gains in 1080p, 1440p saw 20% gains, and 4K saw 24% gains. And that brings us to the most complex chart of them all. In the blue bar is the 7700K using the 271 second render provided by Linus Tech Tips. Now, in that 1800X review that he did, it wasn't specified whether it was a 1080p render, a 1440p render, or a 4K render. So we're just applying it straight across the board and then extrapolating from that where the 8700K may fall. The gray bar shows the 8700K, at least hypothetically, if it only had four cores and eight threads as past generations have had, except we're giving it that 10% faster single threaded performance. Then on the far right is the red bar, which is the 8700K's final projection. This is including the 10% faster single threaded bump, as well as getting the percentage bump from having six cores and 12 threads, as opposed to four cores and eight threads. So again, this is all based on the Linus tech tips render time from their 1800x review so these numbers are very much a raw estimation however it does look like coffee lake should give us a pretty significant gain over the 7700k in adobe media encoder so obviously coffee lake is gonna give us some good gains uh, in the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. Obviously today we're just looking at the media encoder, 
but whether it's worth the upgrade will be ultimately up to each individual consumer. If you are on Haswell or older architecture, it may be time to upgrade to Intel's new lineup and gain a couple extra cores as well as a few more threads. But if you're on Scala Lake or Kaby Lake, it may be a little bit more of a tough sell to upgrade considering the platform cost. But benchmark estimation aside, are you going to upgrade? So let me know in the comments down below if you plan on jumping on the Coffee Lake train or are you going to shy away and maybe uh, stick with AMD Zen architecture as your next PC build? Let me know in those comments down below. And as always, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I will let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.